Hey there, Summoners, how have you all been? It's great to see you again. My name is Crumbs and I'll be your host for our latest low elo tier list for patch 13.5. Like this series suggests, we'll provide you with a comprehensive view of where each champion is in terms of their current power level. If you're looking to climb this patch, make sure to observe these lists carefully and also take note of our highlighted picks. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this and let's get the video started. To start, we have our top lane tier list. Take a look, this patch's OP picks are Ola, Yorick, and Mordekaiser, so make sure to pick or ban them if you're serious about ranking up. Speaking of Mordekaiser, he's our first featured pick for the video. You'll want to play him not only because he's one of the strongest magic damage dealers, but because he's on the easier side to pick up. He doesn't have any points in click abilities aside from his ultimate, so you'll definitely need to run a few games before you get super comfortable with him. Most of his difficulty comes from learning how to properly use his W to max out the efficiency of Last Stand. If you use it too early or too often, you won't be able to gain that juicy bonus damage you need to really get the edge over your opponents. Ideally, you can use the full value of the shield in a longer trade with an opponent as you'll get the most effective health out of that. But of course, you'll need to sometimes use it to heal instead. Another hard part about Mordekaiser is his lack of mobility. He's not a traditional AP carry in the sense that he's sort of a tank carry hybrid. While he does excel at damage and frontlining, he is significantly less mobile and lacks the long range that mages bring. Opponents who are good at killing will give you a hard time, but you can also learn to read their movements and of course, learn better counterplay to the counterplay. We're going deep into the mind games now, aren't we? That said, once you've invested time into him, you're getting one of the strongest top laners in the game who can shred through any enemy's health bar. Once ahead, his lane opponent is going to be miserable because even when teammates want to help, Mordekaiser can use his ultimate to almost always at least trade one for one. As the game progresses, his ultimate becomes even more crucial as he's able to isolate the most important enemy, whether it's a pesky support or a super fed carry, and blow them up in his arena. The next champion we'll feature is Nasus. He's rated S tier, so he's still a great pick even if he's just a little bit less effective than the OP picks we've mentioned. However, one thing Nasus does have over his competition is that he's easier to play than most. The only hard parts about playing Nasus are surviving the early game. Before level 6, he definitely does lack power and you're gonna get bullied in most matchups. If you're not careful with your E, you can also mess up your wave management, but in lower elos, you probably won't get punished as hard as a Grandmaster or Challenger player. Don't rely on that crutch though, and try your best to only hit the minions you want to last hit so you can avoid putting yourself in bad spots. In regards to his carry potential, our analysts rate him 6 out of 7, the second highest possible. After level 6, Nasus turns on and can decimate his opponents in lane. The extra health, damage, and lower Q cooldown make him a much more competent fighter with a summoner ghost. He's able to chase overextended enemies down the lane and outright beat them in a fight. There's also what Nasus is most known for, his limitless scaling. The longer the game goes, the worse it gets for enemies as he literally gets to one-shot carries at later points of the game. Otherwise, he gets so many stacks that he can eventually take turrets down within seconds and just end the game himself. That's it for our top lane pick, so let's head into the jungle next. For the jungle tier list, check out our OP tier, Wukong, Amumu, and Jarvan. Our analysts rate him 4 out of 7 in the difficulty scale, but trust me, it's worth learning him if you want to climb. The hard part about playing Wukong is learning how to use his W properly. Used poorly and you're not going to be as tricky as you need to be and will leave yourself vulnerable to the enemy. His clear speed is also slower than most other junglers and ganking before 6 is way harder. It'll take some getting used to, but he's a powerful champion that you can't overlook. For carry potential, Wukong is easily one of the best team fighters in the game. His ultimate is absolutely insane. He has great ways to access the backline and his W allows him to reposition himself in the middle of chaotic fights. After level 6, because he gains access to his ultimate, Wukong also becomes one of the strongest skirmishers in the game. The raw damage as well as CC he brings to the table are in a whole class of their own. For players that want someone easy or a champion to pick up when they're autofilled, consider Nocturne, who our analysts consider S plus tier. Nocturne gains the easiest rating we give, and that's because he has an easy, fast jungle clear as well as a very simple kit. You can learn how to play him after a single game. It's really straightforward, and the hardest part is learning to time your Q as you land with your ultimate on an enemy. But even that isn't very difficult. The way Nocturne carries games is solely through his ultimate. 
he's able to isolate his target and confuse the rest of the enemy team. His pressure makes it much harder for enemies to lane as the darkness makes it even more difficult for their allies to react. As he gets more fed, he starts one-shotting squishies and his opponents have to play with the fear of knowing that there is no such thing as a true 1v1. After making picks, his team can then force objectives. One common way to play Nocturne is to pick off an enemy side laner, then pressure split pushing that same lane right after the kill. Enemy players are forced to meet his pressure, giving Nocturne's teammates a chance to do something else on the other side of the map. That covers our jungle pick, so let's run through the mid lane next. In the mid lane, our OP picks for the patch are Aurelian Soul, Anivia, and Annie. Similarly to how we talked about Nasus in the top lane, we'll feature Vagar in the mid lane. He's a relatively easy champion as well, rated 2 out of 7 by our team. With buffs to his Q and W, Vagar is able to play safer than before and more consistently build stacks. While immobile, Vagar's D is a great defensive tool that makes it difficult for enemies to approach. Thus, you're gonna have a pretty easy time playing defensively early on and eventually getting to a point where you're hard carrying teamfights. In regards to how he carries his games, Vagar obviously scales, even rather early on. His damage is already solid and the longer the game goes, the scarier he gets. I personally would argue that his E is his best ability. You can stun enemies and also control a gigantic zone of the fight with it, as you can force enemies to position themselves in ways that they don't want to. Landing the stun, however, lets you follow up with a full combo that'll blow up basically anyone that isn't a tank stacking magic resistance. Even then, you can get close to deleting them in the later parts of the game. The next champion we have is Fizz. Learning him is a bit harder than other champions as you will need to learn to not take poke for free. You'll need to try and fight back aggressively at times. It does take some courage and experimenting to master this, so don't feel bad if you end up getting punished for trying to learn. Make sure to get a better idea of where your limits are each game so you know just how far you can go. Another thing you'll want to focus on while practicing is using your E properly. Use it poorly and you're gonna leave yourself in a pretty bad spot, so be cautious. What makes Fizz such a strong carry is that he's able to one-shot scaling mid laners and start snowballing. His high damage and mobility make it suffocating to lane against, especially when you mess up once and fall behind. Another part of this is how good Fizz is at diving. Because of his E and even his ultimate, his enemies are under a lot of pressure even under turret. In later teamfights, he remains a massive threat with his burst damage and the worst part for his enemies is that he can usually take his kill, then get out for free. After waiting for his cooldowns to come back up, he gets more opportunities to fish for kills. Before moving forward, let me also ask you our question of the day. What's something you learned about a champion that you think is really cool? Whether it's recent or not, I want to read your answers in the comments below. What I learned recently, which really shouldn't be a surprise to me, is that you can activate Electrocute with Annie's E. It can be a pretty big deal early on when you're trading in the early laning phase and it blows my mind that I never even thought about that. Well, let's continue the video by moving on to the bottom lane. In the bottom lane, we have Samira, Ziggs, and Neela as our OP picks. However, the champion we'll feature is going to be Zaya, who sits right below them. If any of the top three get nerfed, you can expect Zaya to immediately take their spot in the near future. Zaya is rated 3 out of 7 in terms of difficulty by our analysts. Learning to play around her feathers and adapting to how your enemies are trying to close the distance is crucial. You probably won't get it perfectly every time, but as long as you learn and make the small adjustments to your positioning between games, you'll only get better. What keeps her from being particularly difficult, however, is her ultimate. It's an incredible defensive tool that helps her stay safe for the majority of the game, so you can get away with more aggressive positioning than many other marksmen. Zaya is a lethal carry that her opponents must learn to respect. She's one of the most potent team fighters as enemies need to be very thoughtful of where her feathers are. Stepping even just a little bit too far or going into the wrong place can cost a team fight altogether. Another great thing, like I mentioned just a second ago, is how safe she is. If her ultimate wasn't enough, Gale Force makes it even harder for enemies to reach her. Due to her safety, Zaya is able to continuously deal damage throughout a fight. Even if her enemies try to commit everything to taking her out, there's no guarantee they'll succeed and honestly, they might even find themselves dying while trying. Short and sweet, that's it for the bottom lane picks this patch, so let's wrap it up with supports. Take a look at our various tier lists for support this patch. For Engage supports, our top pick is Amumu. For Enchanters, we have Sona, and for Pressure supports, we've got Annie. 
Now for our featured pick of the patch, we have Yumi, one of the easier champions in the game. You won't need to invest very much to master her. You do have to be careful when you hop off your ally to try and auto for her passive. Pick your moments well and you'll be in a decent spot though. Another thing you'll need to be careful about is mana usage in the early game. Overusing abilities can put you in a bad spot, but even if you mess up, it's not the end of the world, as you'll still prove to be a great teammate with the insane utility you bring later on. In terms of carry potential, Yumi has found herself in a great spot. With her recent changes, she has even better synergy with champions who already have high scaling. This opens up some oppressive pairings, so definitely consider picking her up if you have a duo you play with. Following changes to her ultimate, Yumi is also an incredible teamfighter. The massive healing she can provide can determine the outcome of fights in new ways. In addition, it still proves to be a huge nuisance to enemies, as the damage is still pretty good and the stacking slow is still oppressive. With that covered, we've wrapped up our low elo tier list for patch 13.5. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to share with us any thoughts or feedback in the comments section below. Thank you for watching everyone, good luck in your games, and I'll see you all next time.